so Ken and I are here to investigate and research some of the famous sites, megalithic sites that we have of Nan Madol, but also other key interesting points which we're here today at this really interesting petroglyphic site of these really old petroglyphs in stones. That's right, this is called Pontape site, so the Pontape petroglyph site. There's about 700 different motifs here on this boulder, this rocky outcrop. In fact, the word Pontape means on a boulder. So you've got the 700 or so different motifs, different, different images that have been carved into the rock or, or pecked as is done in, in petroglyphic style. And so what's really interesting, we find many of these petroglyphs throughout the Pacific and we find where many years ago in the island of Tonga off some small group of islands we found these really old petroglyphs that were actually under the ocean still or on the coast no one has seen them for thousands of years because of the sand that covered these um, petroglyphs but as the sand has now sort of receded during recent storms over the last few years they've now seen these petroglyphs that they never knew was there in fact, they're really common in Polynesia, so places like Tonga and particularly Hawaii as well. But we don't see many petroglyphs in Micronesia, which is where we are now, except for this site and perhaps a couple of others. So this site here on the island of Pompeii is really significant in terms of understanding people's movement through the Pacific and looking at the correlations in the, the art between places like this in Pompeii and the petroglyphs that you might see in Hawaii and Tonga as well with the simple theory that if the artwork is the same you can you can sort of guess or or interpret that as as meaning that the the people traveled from those different islands uh, in a very short period of time bringing that that style that or that that culture with them when they moved so what is the style of writing what's well, always been mysterious could this be some of the early writings or petroglyphs by the Lapita people the early um, sailors or the early people that went through the Pacific. Also, could this be a sacred language, a mystical language that is spoken of, the language of the gods? And so we see these interesting symbols of swords and crosses. And one is reminded of the many different symbols or universal symbols we see throughout the world. And so the question is, is this a navigational language which is directed by higher intelligence but also directed by the navigation through the stars. What we do notice in this side that it's face faces south and here face facing south we have the Southern Cross. And so we find it very interesting we see so many crosses upon this stone. And could this also be then aligned to the Southern Cross? Could this be some sort of calendar in stone? Some sort of message that we can see? And also for the um, summer solstice or the solstice here is also here in the south as well and so facing south we have the key also alignment with the solar but also there are many stories associated to the stone yeah in fact it's it's quite difficult to get a an understanding or the i guess the, the true story of, of of who created these petroglyphs for the simple fact that the the cultural tradition of passing down information has has been ruptured, if you like, one author used that word as a way of indicating that when you have colonization by a series of different, um, you know, people who colonize places, uh, including Micronesia, you have a disruption or a rupturing of that cultural tradition of passing down information from the older generation to the younger generation, particularly when the older generation and the younger generation is, is suffering from particularly high rates of mortality through uh, the diseases that have been brought into the islands and so you have this severing of, of this passing down of information leading to the new generation that is completely um, ignorant of the some of the cultural traditions of uh, of things like you know who created the, the petroglyphs and so on if, if you ask people they'll tell you um, a number of different anecdotes as to who inscribed these petroglyphs and, and perhaps when. Generally speaking, people tend to say that it was somebody from the, the, the West, so 
Um, the, the people who drew these petroglyphs came from another land, if you like, whether that be India or somewhere else in, or in Southeast Asia, um, or even the, some stories say, the, the two brothers who found Pompeii, Olisipa and Olosipa, who um, we'll see in Nan Madol, is connected to the, the establishment of, of a dynasty here on Pei, Pompeii. Uh, one of the stories goes that the, the rock face here with the petroglyphs is representative of a blanket. So these two brothers, whether they be Olosipa or Lotipa, um, or a couple of other names are given as well, um, had this blanket that they put down and the images that you see on the rock face are this blanket. And also the interesting is the names um, of the two men which has some sort of interesting sound vibration that sounds very similar to the stars that we see in the famous constellation of Orion. Yeah, so another story talks about uh, another set of two men and their names are Mantik and Manlap. But another interesting feature that we see also is the sound element. And it's talked about how certain area of this rock, which is known as the magic door. And one of the stories here that this represents a door way into another world. These greater beings did pass into the rock as a magical door into a faraway land knocking with small stones at the location where the door of the house is purported to be which produces this hollow sound and so this is considered the doorway of the house where they claim to go into into this other world so we have these interesting vibrations and so what we are looking at here and what Ken and I are researching, could this be some of the hidden mysteries to the lost civilization? Could these be stories of ancient travels across the Pacific?